All right, so we've been talking about widgets. We have a few that are built in, not that many. If you have handy the syllabus, you want to take a quick look at the syllabus, but I'll tell you here. On the last day of the class, what I wanted to look at also was uh, some uh, plugins, plugin recommendations. On the left side, let's click on plugins. This takes you to your installed plugins view. Plugins. Plugins are little apps that give you more features. Oftentimes, a plugin creates a widget. One plugin can create multiple widgets. Sometimes you get widgets also from your theme. Uh, sometimes a plugin doesn't create a widget, but some other functionality. We've already together installed one plugin at the end of the day last week. Anyone remember which one that was? Duplicator. Duplicator. The duplicator plugin gave itself a new little section here. This does not exist on a plain old WordPress site. There's no duplicator. There's no very good method to back up your site in plain old WordPress. There is under Tools, Export, and Export, but that's not that good. So then companies come up with these uh, items, and then they either give them away or sell them, and Duplicator is one of them. Uh, what's, what you often hear about is this buzzword, freemium. It's a mixture of free and premium. As in, the plugin will have uh, free aspects, very valuable free aspects, but then some of the better aspects about the plugin are premium, meaning you have to pay for them. You see the freemium with plugins, with themes, widgets, with almost everything, with software. You buy that game, or you get that game on your phone that's free, but then you pay 99 cents and you get extra lives, and you pay 99 cents and you get extra this, and you pay 99 cents and you get it that. And suddenly that free game has become a $50 game from those little increments, the little transactions. So the duplicator plugin, it's perfectly capable with the version we got, which is the completely free version. It's very capable. It can back up your site. It can bring it back. But it's not very automated, is it? I have to go in. I have to create the backup. I have to download it. I have to re resurrect it and all of that. There's Duplicator Pro, which you can set it up and it will automatically make a copy for you and save it to your Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever online storage you have. But that's part of the premium aspect. I believe it's about uh, $45 or so one-time fee for the pro version. But this free version works just fine. Duplicator. It's a plugin that gives you extra features and all your plugins in WordPress are found here. Built in, we also have this one, A Kismet, and this other one, Hello Dolly. Hello Dolly is a pretty worthless plugin. It doesn't do anything. Um, but it's installed on our site. It's not doing anything because it's not active. And even when it's active, it doesn't do anything, really. So you can have as many plugins as you want. You can have as many features as you want on your WordPress. And you can mix free and premium plugins, or completely free all the time, or completely premium. It doesn't matter. The downsides. Let me make some notes right here. I'll make some notes and, I, and I'll put them into the network folder a little bit later. Plugins. Plugins are mini apps that give you extra features. They can be free, premium, or freemium. So free, obviously, that it doesn't cost anything. Premium can range from not too expensive to very expensive. 
and freemium is somewhere in the middle that usually starts off with a free version of it and it goes off to some paid version depending on its features and such. You can have as many plugins as you want. Installed and or activated. Because you can download and install a plugin but you don't have to use it. Let's say I downloaded a slideshow plugin but I'm still working on my site and I'm not using the slideshow yet. It's installed but it's not active. Then eventually I finish my site, I create the slideshow, I activate it and now it's installed and active. And what I'm seeing here is a Kismet is installed but not active. You have to activate it. Duplicator is installed and you can deactivate it. Hello Dolly is installed but not activated. So we've got pros, we've got cons about widgets. The pro is gives you great extra features. Such as uh, spam prevention, backup software, chat features. You can have a plugin that when someone visits your site, in the corner it'll say chat live now with our tech support. You don't have to know anything about the programming, you just install the plugin, set it up, and then when someone clicks that, you will get a notification or a phone call or whatever, where then you can answer the questions live. So you get all these great extra features. You can have multiple ones. A few cons are too many plugins can slow down your site. Too many plugins can slow down your site. You've got all of these little, little apps doing their own thing, running their own code, using your memory on your server. And you've got 12 of them. Well, each one of them needs its own resources, so it could slow down your site. Too many, or the, one of the concept plugins is could be a security vulnerability. <clears throat> a plugin could be an attack vector, which is the fancy way of saying a way that you can be hacked. Because this is software. When you've got an iPhone or an Android phone, every once in a while suddenly it asks you to do an update. And if you're on an iPhone and you're on iPhone back a few years ago, you were on I iOS 7 and then it went to iOS 8 and suddenly all your icons were different and you hated it, but you couldn't go back. If you're on Android and you were on an Android um, 4.0 and suddenly it went to 5.0 and then it changed everything and you don't like it, software evolves, software changes, and the purpose of software changes is supposed to be to, to make it more secure. They also take the chance to mess things up and change it for fun. But with plugins, now you've got this software that's running on your site. You've got a chat feature on your site, and that's complex code. If they never fix their security problems, your site could be attacked. You and the 10,000 other sites that has that outdated plugin. And that happens. WordPress, because it's the most popular website tool in the world, is also the most targeted one. That's the fact of life in cybersecurity. When you're the most famous, you're going to be the most targeted. That's why traditionally Windows computers are always getting viruses, because Windows computers take up 80% of the global market share. Macs take up 5%, less of a target, less of a target for people to try to create bad software for the Mac, so it's not that Macs don't get viruses, of course they do, but less of them get it because there's less Macs. Maybe you and all your hipster friends have a Mac, but you are going to get a virus uh, on a Mac. You still want uh, software protection there. It's just that Windows, people are going to get viruses more often because it's more of a target. So here, we need to be mindful of that. Um, another con is sometimes free 
doesn't cut it. The free version of a plugin might do everything you need except one thing. So either you're going to live with that one thing that it doesn't do, or you're going to pay the author to get that extra feature or other extra features. But these are very affordable. They can range from like $5 to $50 to $200, depending on the plugin, the author, etc. Because these are all from independent companies. Most of the time, these plugins are not coming from the official WordPress company. They're coming from uh, a small design studio. They're coming from someone that does this work in, in the garage. They're coming from a large design studio. Some come from WordPress officially. Yes? Would you recommend always updating to the latest version of your plugin? Or not necessarily? There's a whole discussion that we'll have in more detail in part two of the class about updates. Because on the one hand, you want to do updates because they keep your software secure. But new updates, new versions of the software may conflict with older software. This new plugin may somehow break your other plugin, your e commerce plugin. So that's a big discussion to have for next month about updates. The short answer is yes, you do want to update your plugins and your themes and such. The longer answer is no, because of this, 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 and this, which we'll talk about next time. If you like a plugin on someone's web page, can you find out what that is? Yes, but it requires a little bit of detective work. So let's say you go to a website built in WordPress. How do you know it's built in WordPress? You find, you find out like this. You go to whatever website and then on some empty area of the site, not on a picture or whatever, but on an empty area, you do right-click, view source. Some say view page source, some say view code. But any website, you can view its code. And then you do some detective work in that you have to look at the code here for keywords that give you that answer. So I need to look around here, and yeah, it looks like gibberish if I don't know HTML but some things make sense. I see something about Twitter here, and as I scroll around and kind of look around, I might be able to find the clues of a particular theme or plugin. <coughs> you can, of course, ask the, the, the website. There, there's probably a contact form, and send them a quick message and say, what, how did you create that chat feature? Worst case scenario, they don't answer you. Okay, worst case scenario, they, they tell you to shove off, but probably they'll ignore you. Best case scenario, they'll share and tell, yeah, it's this plugin. What do they have to lose? Question. Do you suggest that you have to that's always going to go back to the answer, but it depends on the theme, because the theme itself might give you the ability. I'm seeing under appearance, I have Omega Child themes. I have like some setting for that theme that I might be able to edit. Um, it's hard to find an actual sort of plugin that helps you do this, because how would this plugin know to edit that theme that came out two weeks ago? But we have the ability with anything we do on WordPress to do this. If you go over to Appearance Editor, you don't have to do this, but if you go to Appearance Editor, look at this, it pulls back the curtain and it shows you all the code that the site is made out of. If I know the code, this is amazing. I can then now change anything of my site. If I don't know the code, this is a big wall of gibberish. But in the next class next month, we'll play with this just a little bit, but this is a huge topic. But with any... Uh, thing in WordPress, we can always pull back the curtain and edit the code. <laughs> so what we do here on this screen of plugins is we can manage our plugins because plugins don't have a... Um, there's probably some documentation that from WordPress that recommends to, to plugin authors how to make plugins, but it doesn't seem that people follow the recommendations. And what I mean by that is once you install a plugin, you kind of have to then figure out what did it do.
Duplicator plugin is easy because it created a brand new duplicator screen. And everything about duplicator is here. Sometimes there is no screen, there's no link, handy link. Sometimes a plugin adds itself to the settings menu. When we get to the e-commerce aspect next month, which is a plugin, part of what the plugin installs is inside of settings. We will have a brand new settings for the store. Sometimes a plugin adds itself to the tools screen. I'll show you a plugin in a moment that I highly recommend that goes into tools. And then sometimes it goes elsewhere. So you have to you can always see what plugins you have installed here in the installed plugin screen of plugins. And maybe right here it'll tell you what to do, where to go, or maybe there'll be a link that you can click to take you to the right place. You can always find about your plugins there, but they'll usually be in some other screen. This Hello Dolly plugin is not really worth anything, so how do you think we get rid of it? Delete. So I'm going to delete the Hello Dolly plugin. It's going to say, Are you sure? You're about to delete a bunch of a bunch of files and such. It doesn't do anything. It's 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 like a theoretical plugin for theme for plugin authors to create plugins. For us, we're not going to need it. So we'll say yes, delete these files. And notice there's no undo. If you had added your your e-commerce plugin and you set up a huge store and somehow you click delete and somehow you also click yes, delete, you've deleted your whole store. There's no undo. If you make a backup with duplicator, there is that makes a perfect backup of everything, including your plugins and all settings. Yes. Is there a good best practice to back up prior to updates? Yeah. The best practice would be make a backup of your whole site when you're going to do updates. And in the next class, we'll have a whole day where we talk about updates and all of that. But it's uh, best practice. Make a backup when in doubt. If something could break when you're about to do something, make a backup. If something goes wrong, you bring it back to life. Yeah, unfortunately. Because this plugin comes from the company Automatic. This plugin comes from the company Life in the Grid. That other plugin comes from that other company. So it's a bunch of different developers of varying skills creating plugins for a big beast of WordPress with many moving parts. And so, yes, a plugin could crash your whole site. You don't know until it happens. Actually, you do. You will see right now about adding plugins because people review these things. So maybe don't download the plugin that has a low review. But we still don't know until we actually apply it with our site. You know, you see all of those commercials about medications. Do not take this medication if you've got this condition and that condition, or if you're taking that medication because it could conflict. Same thing here. We've got a site that has all of these moving pieces, and now you're adding a new foreign element, and it could destabilize your site, slow down your site, who knows. But there's an easy way to fix it. You just deactivate the plugin, and then if it's really bad, delete it. Akismet is one of the plugins that I recommend. I'm going to mention a few plugins I recommend. One of them is Akismet. This helps you manage spam. Akismet is a free plugin with a lot of users all over the world that once you activate it, it's going to monitor when anyone leaves a comment on your site. It'll analyze the message, and from its huge database of spam, it will then take out the spam and not even bother you. If someone leaves a comment that possibly might be spam, it will then alert you. Please check out this message. Approve it, deny it, spam it. So Akismet protects you from spam. It needs a little bit of setup, which we will not do, but you need to click to activate, and then it will ask you, do this, do this, and do this. And it's free, but it will highly recommend for you to donate $1, $5, whatever you want, or $0. You can do that too. Uh, it's funny because there's a little slider how much you want to donate. 
and I think it starts off like at ten dollars and it's got a little smiley face when you drag it to the higher values the smiley face gets even smilier <laughs> and when you drag it down below the ten it becomes you know a less smiley face and then a nonplussed <laughs> face and then a sad face but then you still can download it it's just trying to guilt you that's also how people make money nowadays they solicit donations my plugin is free but if you want to donate five dollars here's my PayPal link and I do recommend you do that because you probably spend a lot of money on coffee. Where's that getting you? But this plugin that is protecting your site against spam, this plugin that is helping you run your e-commerce business, 20 bucks, one-time fee, sure. I spend 20 bucks on coffee every day, some of us. So I do recommend to chip in a little bit. Another plugin that I recommend, this is like the, the super plugin. At the top, click add new and it's gonna showcase it right here jetpack jetpack which comes officially from WordPress the parent company of WordPress is automatic they release this plugin very popular it's got over a million active installations it seems that my version, however, it seems that this version is incompatible with my version of WordPress. Um, so some, the theme. huh? It could be the theme. It could be the theme. Um, so it's a lot of moving pieces. It's a big puzzle. But what this plugin does, it gives me these extra features. You can create. Remember, on the first day of class, I said you can create a website at WordPress.com or using WordPress.org we've got the wordpress.org version we've got the full featured no training wheels version of wordpress obviously we have to manage your own database but over at wordpress.com you can create the training wheels version and it has a lot of cool features that this one doesn't have automatically on the .com version we can easily set it up to share our posts to twitter and to facebook i write a new blog post I click a button and automatically goes to Facebook so that I don't forget to post it on Facebook. It has the ability to give you more protection when someone is trying to hack into your site. That's at WordPress.com. When you're on WordPress.org like us, it's you're on your own. But if you use the WordPress.com, the Jetpack.com plugin, it connects your WordPress.org with WordPress.com to give you those features for free. It needs a little setup and it needs for you to create a free account at WordPress.com but this is one of the ones for clients we do right away. They hire us, we're gonna make them a WordPress site, we install a brand new basic WordPress and one of the first plugins we set up is, work, is Jetpack because it has so many great features. It does require a bit of setup, we're not gonna do it together, you can explore it on your own. You can look up online how to set up Jetpack, you get lots of answers. One of the things that I mentioned in the syllabus is this plugin, the Jetpack plugin. Again, how do you know what's a good plugin that might not crash your site? We have star ratings. We have how actively is it used? When was it last updated? Is it compatible? If there's a plugin that has not been updated in nine months, that might not be a good plugin to use. That's nine months. For people to possibly figure out a way to hack your site. Notice this. Updated nine months ago, relatively low stars. There's plenty of other ones that do this with more stars. This is very active, has not been updated recently, and in the grand scheme of the internet, nine months is not recent. I would say I'd be wary if the plugin hasn't been updated in at the most three months. That's a quarter of a year. If your plugin is older than a quarter of a year, that's enough time for someone to figure out how to hack it, possibly. This one was updated 10 months ago. It's still got a lot of stars, which is surprising. But that's 10 months for someone to figure out how to break into it. And it seems old because that's, that's an old Bing icon. They don't use that icon anymore. So Arnie, you need to step your game up. This Google Analytics, updated six months ago, that's also getting a bit old. But high star, super cash two months ago, one year ago. Hmm. But it also depends on what kind of update they apply to. 
It's still going to tell you, even if you do a very basic update of the name of the plugin, it still will mark it as a new update. Yeah. So Okay, I see, I see. Yes, that's true. But what you can always do is see more details, <clears throat> and usually it'll tell you okay. what has updated. There's a, there's a log of yeah. what has updated. Right here, change log. So on version 307, this is what they did here, this is what they did there. On version 306, that's what they did. So by clicking more details, here's where we can see that, and also tes <coughs> testimonials, reviews. So February 24th, three stars. Used to be simple, and it used to work flawlessly for all the basics. With this new interface, it is ridiculously stupid when you try to edit something like title. There's no text field, and add title, it disappears. Please roll back to the good old interface. So here's how you make informed decisions. I need a brand new Twitter plugin. I search Twitter, there's a thousand of them. I make a decision by how old it is, is it compatible, how many stars, and how many votes, and how many usage, how much usage. Yes? Usually it is. Notice on my site here, I've got on the sidebar here, these are all the social networks that I'm on. So if someone wants to go look at my Instagram, there it is, or my SoundCloud, that's a plugin. And then if I actually read an article here and then they like it and they want to share it elsewhere, there's plugins there. Jetpack has that built in. So it's a plugin of like extra plugins. It consolidates a lot of these great usage things, such as here. You see on websites that you read an article, and it says, why not also read this one that you might like? That's not built into WordPress. With Jetpack, you can activate that feature, and you'll get more related content. So that's why I highly recommend Jetpack. Download it, install it, and you'll get all these great extra features. On my notes here, another plugin that I recommend. It, if you scroll enough here, you'll see it. But if you don't see it, you want to, at the top, you've got search plugins. If you search for Yoast SEO, Yoast, I guess like Toast, Y O A S T, SEO. There's many plugins out there that will help you with SEO, search engine optimization. I teach a class on it Friday or Monday, and next month, other days of the week. But a plugin like this is invaluable because it helps you quickly optimize your pages for the search engines to get found when someone searches. That's the whole art and science and magic of SEO. And so Yoast SEO is one of the ones I recommend, the one I usually use for clients. There's another one called the All-in-One SEO Pack. That's another good one. My, some of my colleagues recommend it. Either or will work. Yoast SEO or All-in-One SEO Pack. Or maybe some of these other ones that I don't have experience with. These might work as well. I don't know. You have to try them out, read the reviews, and all of that. Can you use two of the same type of things together? I would not recommend it. If you're using two different plugins to accomplish the same thing, I don't recommend it. Because they're going to step over each other's toes. This one is going to change your meta tags, and the other one is going to change your meta tags. And then you might get weird results. You might get double meta tags, which is not good for SEO. So I would recommend only use one plugin for one task. They could conflict. What's that? I don't have uh, exactly time in this class to talk about it, but again, this, this is something that I talk in detail in the SEO class. And what this lets us do is optimize our page. This page over here, for example, I want to get traffic 
to this page. That plugin will help me by giving me ratings and such. You missed this. You missed that. Good job on this. So that's the whole SEO, <coughs> art and science, and a plugin like Yoast SEO or the all-in-one SEO pack will guide you. And it's free. There's a free version of it, and there's a paid version of it. More features, but most of the time you can get by pretty well on all the free versions. And it's probably like $40 for the full version. Yes. Hmm. To my knowledge, I I don't know. I haven't searched for that. That might be something. So here under plugins, I could search for, I don't even know what I would call it, maybe auto follow social media. I don't know. I have to think of keywords to search for, and then I might find results. It's giving me the social media widget. I don't know. I need to read the details and what do people say. It may or may not be the right answer. It has four reviews, 69 reviews six months ago. So I personally don't know that. Does anyone? Has anyone heard of any? social media. It just says social media on it, and uh, it's by Signals, and they actually plug you into Facebook, Google Plus, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn. But I think the question more is that if someone visits my site, I want them to be able to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, all of those at once. Is that the question? Yeah. yeah. I guess it depends if they're even on the site. Yeah. So it, it might be even a hard plugin to develop because I'm on Twitter, but I'm not on Facebook, I'm not on Pinterest, and this plugin is gonna s try to connect the person to my to my Pinterest, which doesn't exist. So I don't know, it, it might it might not exist. The closest is that you're gonna find a variety of plugins that that help you put your social networks on your page like that, and it's still up to the person to click there and follow me on GitHub or whatever. <clears throat> Here then, it's on the syllabus, but I'll write it right here. Uh, recommended plugins, a kismet for spam management. Jetpack for for mm, <coughs> for extra. For extra WordPress.com features, next class, next month, we'll, we'll see that more in detail. But extra features like sharing buttons, related <coughs> posts, a little bit better protection for signing in and such. We've got Yoast SEO for SEO, search engine optimization. And the one we've been using all along, Duplicator, for site backups and restores. There's a few more, which we'll talk about in detail next time. There's a few more that I also, there's about six or so plugins that I use for every, every client. Uh, they'll make more sense next time. But uh, these are ones to, to think about, and they're all free to start using, and some of them have paid aspects, or donate, <coughs> donation recommendations. But these are these extra things to add to WordPress to give me more abilities. This opens up then a whole world of, of possibilities and extra things because when we come back next time we'll start to talk about the e-commerce plugin. If you want to start researching it, there are two big e-commerce plugins. The one we're going to use is called WP e-commerce. And another one is called WooCommerce. And there's also Shopify, a bunch of them. There's everyone's going to have a plugin for you to sell products. If uh, you want a very powerful plugin with a very complex selling structure, WooCommerce is the better one. We're going to talk about WP Commerce 
because that one can get us v online and selling products very quickly. It's not as robust, as powerful, as full-featured as WooCommerce, but WooCommerce is more expensive. Both of these are free to get started with, but with WooCommerce you're really going to see right away, I need to pay for this module and this module and this module, but it's very powerful. With WP Commerce, we don't have to pay for anything, and we're going to get started right away, collecting money through PayPal, selling products with variations and sizes and styles, and managing an inventory. But it doesn't have every single feature like upsells, cross-sells, linked products, all of the stuff that doesn't make sense at the moment. It'll make sense later. In class, we're going to learn WP Commerce, and then on your own, you can go learn WooCommerce. And when you've learned one, the other is not so complex. It's just that it'll have different icons, maybe, and different features, but conceptually it's the same. Products, inventory, prices, pictures, descriptions, all of that. Collecting money. And so we've made websites, e-commerce <coughs> websites, in both these ways and other ways too, and they've all got their ups and downs. Uh, whatever works for you, works for you. You can sell, we'll see that we'll be able to sell real products that you ship throughout the city or the country or the world. Virtual products, which are like downloadable music, downloadable books, downloadable videos, right? I make a, think about it like this, what if I do motivational speaking? And I develop a five-hour course on motivational speaking, a video. And I give away 30 minutes for free on YouTube. I've enticed people for 30 minutes at the end of the video, and it says, and to get the full 40, the, the rest of the four hours, visit our website. Click from YouTube back to my website, and at my website, they will actually purchase the five hours. And we can sell that on our site with these plugins. We can even do affiliate selling, as in, I'm going to sell on eBay, I'm going to sell on, on uh, Amazon, but I'm still going to have a website where I have my blog or other things, uh, affiliate ads or whatever. And so I can sell the products on my store, and when you click the link, it'll then go to Amazon and complete the fulfillment. That'll make sense next time. But we're going to end the main lecture in just a moment so that we can back up the site and have a little lab time. Before that, any general questions on anything we've talked about today? A lot to think about, a lot to plan, and there'll be more next time. So together, again, we are going to back up our site so that I don't lose it, so that next week I can get started with where I am already. And then we get the practice again of bringing the site back to life. So that's on my handout number four. We're going to do the first section again, archiving the site. We've already got the plugin installed, so we don't need to do steps one, two, and three. We've got duplicator installed. Step four, we have a duplicator link. We're going to click on it. So on the left side, click your duplicator link. Click the Create New tab at the top. The package name should list today's date and the name of your site. You may change it. Okay, so at the top right, click Create New. It saw today's date, so it's going to create a file, that zip file. Remember at the beginning of the day? We had a zip file with a huge name and installer.php. Those came from Duplicator. You can change this name if you want. I don't recommend it because it's already going to save it efficiently. I can make multiple copies of my site, multiple backups. You're going to lose track of your backups. If you use this naming scheme, you won't. This naming scheme, which for most of us is backwards for the dates. Most of us in the US write our dates <coughs> month, day, year. So <coughs> January 4th, 
2016. If you save your file on a computer as 1-4-16.mysite.zip, whatever, and then you keep making backups throughout the whole year, and then it's 2017, and you list all of your backups, all of the backups with that start with 1 will be listed together. All the January backups are listed together. I don't quite want that. I want all my backups of a particular year listed together. So then my list is going to then display February 3rd, 2018, mysite.zip. It's, it's going to get out of order. A January date and a February date could get out of order. And what's even confusing is sometimes what happens, sometimes you see an 11 there. Sometimes it organizes it with 11 first because it reads the number 1 and then the number 1 and then the number 2. So the way that we're used to writing it, most of us in the US with month, day, year, is actually going to hurt us. I would recommend when you deal with computers to get used to writing year, month, day. So we're going to have 16-1-4 and we're going to have 16-2 uh, dash 3, and then 16 dash 11 dash 2, and then 17 dash 8 dash 1 dash 8. The year is the first part of the file name, and that's how it's going to organize it. So obviously, 2017 can't exist before 2016. And so, if we write our files like this with the year first, and then the month, and then the date. When we view inside of our folder, what I'm saying is when we view a folder like this, it's alphabetical. It has to alphabetize numbers also. And usually most systems are not smart enough to alphabetize numbers. Because we think of numbers a certain way, and computers think of them in another way. We see 2016, and all it sees is the number 2016. And you might put it in the wrong order. So that's the long way of saying I wouldn't change this number because it's 2016-02-24. When this alphabetizes everything, it'll put it in the order of the year, the month, and the date, and then the website. On my notes here that I'm saying, um, also you want to add a note because here you can write yourself some things and um, under notes you can write anything um, what we accomplished or what we need to accomplish so what did we do in this class we um, added widgets added plugins whatever we did and then I'm going to make a note to do. What I still need to do is add e-commerce plugin. This is only for yourself. When you've got a bunch of backups, what's in this backup? This note is telling you. I use this a lot for clients, and the way that I would use it is like this. Before updates. As I said, updates are useful to do, but they could break things. So I make a copy, I make a backup of the site before the updates, I do the updates, I check if it works. Oops, it didn't. Let me restore my, my backup. I check it, it does work, then I'll make another backup. And that new backup I will put after updates. So now I've got a backup of it when the site is fully updated and functional. And that's my starting point in case anything goes wrong in the future. You don't need to change anything and elsewhere. Storage, archive, installer, don't worry. Click Next. Leave the defaults, click Next. In the Scan Complete section, select Build. If your scan failed, read the notes and check tech support. Everything says good on mine. Where yours might fail, what's very common, a failure, is under the Archive section, Total Size. My site is about 22 and a half megabytes. When your site is getting to about 150 megabytes, 
that might cause you problems. Because what Duplicator is doing is gathering every single file in your site and zipping it down to one file. If you're running this on GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster, Cox, whatever, and your service provider doesn't have the, the capabilities of a fast service provider, while your site is trying to get archived, it may suddenly crash the server, especially with a big site. 150 megabytes, 200 megabytes, 500 megabytes. All of those videos you've got saved on your site are going to slow down the backup process. And so this is going to complain when you're at when you're at more than 150 megabytes, your site it's it might say your site backup might crash. You can still do it, you can still proceed, but you won't know if it'll crash until it crashes. And that happens often with a big site. Do you know? Mm -hmm. Do you know the good one for Duplicator Pro. Duplicator Pro seems to be able to handle it. I've done I've dealt with sites that are, you know, 300 megabytes and it always crashes on the free version. I buy the paid version which is $40 and then it seems to handle it. That's the largest you've tried. Yeah. I haven't gone up to like, you know, 500, 800 megs because again, the large large sizes of usually are usually going to be videos and we're not going to put videos on the site here. We're going to put it on YouTube. Another point of failure could be large, could be names. There is a limit to the name of a, of a file. A file could have 250 characters. You could write, my report 2016, the one where we fired john.xl. That is a valid file name. But you have it up to 250 characters. Further than that, this backup could fail, especially if it's also full of a bunch of special characters because these special characters could mess with the server. So that could be a failure point. And it'll tell you here, show path, it'll tell you these files could cause you problems. It's up to you then to rename those files so that it doesn't cause problems. It doesn't fix it for you, it tells you what the error could be. Yes? Um, Video hosters and then like the um, host are similar to PowerPoint. Do you know a good hoster for like graphics? Like you don't want to host it on your on your weekly app website. Hmm, that's a little bit more complex because there's so many sites out there, and there and people really abuse those video hosting sites to put, you know, all of these funny cat animations and such. So I don't, I personally don't use any hosting sites for graphics. Uh, I keep them on on the client's site, but Jetpack, if you install Jetpack, it has a little feature called Photon, which it kind of does that. It copies, it makes a copy of your graphic onto the WordPress servers, and the WordPress servers are fast. So with Jetpack and Photon, it will speed up your graphic downloads. Okay. And the last possible failure is large files, and it tells you here, if your file is larger than 3 megabytes, that could cause the backup to crash. Because again, it has to take all the files, process them, shrink them down to one zip file, and that could crash the server if you've got a slow server. How do you get a fast server? You pay more money to GoDaddy, to Bluehost, to whatever, and you get a faster server. Or, or if you don't want to pay that, you could pay for the pro version of duplicator. But usually the free one works if you if you stay within the constraints. <coughs> um, let's click build at the bottom. Depending on the complexity of your site it may take a while. In mine it took 6.8 seconds. And I have both these two files, installer and archive. This is what I gave you at the beginning of the day. When you went to my network folder, it had a folder. I gave you that folder, and in the folder, it's got the zip file and the installer. A couple of you, your, your restoration didn't quite work because you were missing one or the other. And so this backup right here, 
at the end of this screen it says don't forget to download both the installer and the archive. Click the installer and it should either automatically start to download or it'll ask you what would you like to do? Open it or save it? You want to save it. I'll click the archive. Again, it downloaded it automatically. If you're on Firefox, oftentimes it asks you, would you like to save it or download it? Internet Explorer, you might get a bar at the bottom that says open it or save it. You're going to save it. And then in my case, I'm in Chrome. If I click on the little icon here, triangle, show in folder. If you're in Firefox, you're going to see an icon at the top right corner of a download arrow. You're going to click the download arrow and click the folder. The point is this downloaded somewhere, usually on the desktop, sometimes in the download folder. Here I am on my desktop, there's my zip file, there's my installer file. This is a new backup. It's different than <coughs> the one of last week. These two files, I need to take them with me. My instructions say, after it completes, you've got an installer and an archive. Click to download each of them. One is called installer PHP, which are the instructions to resurrect the site, and one is something something dot zip, which <coughs> contains all of your items. Do not unzip the zip file. Move the zip file and the PHP file into a folder with the date to keep them together for resurrecting. I downloaded them both. I'm going to create a new folder. Right click, new folder with today's date. And again, look at the way I'm naming this 2016. 0224. It alphabetizes it, and I need to move my zip file and my installer file into that folder. That folder, I move it to my flash drive. That's a backup of my site, and I'm going to put a copy of it right now in the network folder. If you want a copy of how my site ended up, it's in the network folder. Last week's work, this week's work and in the subsequent days. That's why I choose these names. If I call it literally February 7th, February is going to appear after April. F comes after A. Me as a human, I know April comes after February. Computers are dumb. They organize things arbitrarily. So F become, comes after A, but numbers are easy to organize. And so I've backed up my site. I'm done with it for the moment. I can log out. I can go home, etc. We'll do some lab time now in case this didn't quite work for you. But you want to make a copy of your site like I just did, according to my instructions. Take that file with you. And my copy's in the network folder in case you want it. We'll do some, some lab time now if you need it. Thank you for coming. Next time is a brand new class. Everyone needs to line up again here, and I would recommend early. Uh, try not to get here after the class starts, because I could get 20 new people that didn't want to do the basic one. And we've got a relatively full class. If I take 20 more people, your seat's going to get taken. You don't have preferential treatment anymore. It's a new class. So get here, I would recommend 30 minutes early, just in case. <coughs> Line up, I'll get everyone in. We need to enroll everyone in a brand new class. I can't give you a code early. We've got a brand new class. We'll do it next week. <coughs>